So if you were to feed this information to the AI, it might say, oh, yes, uh, they opened their eyes and they're surprised, but it won't be able to tell you why. Uh, hey, my name is Dan, and welcome to uh, the SMR Talking Insights Podcast. Um, I've taken this over a bit, I think. So today, uh, we're having some really interesting conversations. This one's probably the best one you're going to hear so far, so have a listen. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I'm talking to Ben. Hi. Thanks for having me on. I'm uh, Ben Shea, co-founder at Santa Box. Uh, and we're helping our clients to build creative knowledge bases that are embedded with consumer emotions. Mm. So that's a pretty lofty statement, right? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. um, I want to go deeper and deeper into that. Yeah. Um, the biggest question before I start though is why? Why? Um, so really comes from the data that we're using to understand humans as a whole. You know, we really do feel like there's so much more to us than, than what we actually just say to people, right? Uh, everyone's different, the way we think is different. We also have a lot of subconscious cues uh, and all these different characteristics really come together to, you know, to produce who I am and who you are uh, as an individual. And just because you tell me something doesn't always describe, I'm not calling you a liar by any means, but uh, you know, I think there's more to, you know, our, there's our expressions, right? What we're looking at. And I believe these are also cues for us to better understand how we react to stuff. I totally get it. Yeah. I, I, I buy into that as well, mm -hmm. but it's interesting. What are like, let's just talk it out as friends at a table. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think some of the cues are? Like if you were looking to me, mm -hmm. if you asked, um, uh, I'll um, right now and say Daniel is drinking a water. He's wearing a black shirt. We get very kind of what kind of pieces of information? Mm -hmm. For example, you're, you're, you're watching my face. You're yeah, looking. exactly, exactly. I, I think this is a video too. So you mm -hmm. can see this. So to answer your question, there, right? There's really two layers to it, right? Not only am I trying to gauge your reaction. But I'm also trying to understand where that reaction is coming from. Why you producing, say, like, oh, your, your eyes opened up there just for a second, right? So I'm saying something, maybe because I said something interesting. So if you were to feed this information to the AI, it might say, oh, yes, uh, they opened their eyes and they're surprised. But it won't be able to tell you why, because they don't have a camera on my face either. Um, so essentially, we need both sides of the equation. And these components are just not interconnected right now in a live way. Right. Um, and essentially, that's what we're doing at Santa Box by having not only, you know, the emotional recognition, facial coding, attention of the person's face, but we're also analyzing what they're looking at and then combining it together and then asking them a bunch of questions about it as well. Ain't that cool? So right yeah. now at the table, right? it's, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I'm sitting, if it's audio, I'm sitting across from you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we're looking at each other. Like our yep. eyes are, and like, you're right, we're feeding off each other, right? Exactly. It's a two-way street here, right? It's not just you talking to me or me talking to you, you know, it's dynamic, right? We, we react differently and maybe I might try to tell a joke, um, but then maybe you understand it or you don't understand it. And it also depends on your personal characteristics and your culture. And that reaction also changes as well. Do you know any good jokes? Oh, not off the, don't, don't put me on the spot like that. <laughs> Maybe at the end, let me think of one now as we speak. <laughs> Whenever someone asks me for a joke, I never know what to say. <laughs> oh, oh, something, yeah. try, try to say something. Um, so, okay, um, I'm not gonna ask for a joke because neither of us have any jokes, that's mm -hmm. okay. Um, but it's, that's cool, right? That, that's, uh, yeah. it's interesting. Mm -hmm. And it, it sounds unique to me. Are, yeah. there, is there, are there other companies like this out there? Or there? Uh, yeah, there's um, really a bunch of companies out there that are doing components of what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe their core technologies or features of what we have. Uh, for example, uh, emotional recognition, nothing new, right? You have these companies like Evitiva that have tried to do this in the past. Uh, you, of course, have eye tracking companies like Toby and, and some other guys as well. And a newer, uh, the, more of the frontier stuff is video analytics uh, and using uh, AI to understand what's happening in the video. So 12 Labs is one of the newer guys on the block uh, that are doing this. But what's really novel about what we do is like, we've taken these and created our own tech around this and built a machine learning pipeline that sits on the top of all this to not only use these agents to collect the data, uh, but then to process it and then provide outputs to the end user. 
And my assumption, and I don't know mm -hmm. the answer to this, my assumption is there are probably lots of uses for this, mm -hmm. uh, yep. not just research and insights. Yeah, um, so definitely a lot of use cases across the board, right? Uh, our primary focus right now in our go-to-market is definitely for branding and advertising yeah. uh, to help it there. But we've definitely thought, you know, in the future, we want to expand into things like longer form content, like testing. Uh, and, and we do work with, you know, clients like Netflix now and Warner Brothers Discovery, uh, but mainly on kind of branding content and trailers there. But we always see ourselves uh, testing like long form content, like, uh, you know, 20 minute episode, yeah. for example, maybe even movies in the future. Um, another great use case, uh, personally, I would love to get into is education. Imagine a teacher actually knows when they are teaching versus putting their students to sleep, you know, and that's the core of data and information that we can provide. Uh, or, or even like I, I watched you speak this morning. Mm -hmm. So right now it's around noonish or mm -hmm. lunchtime yeah. on uh, Tuesday of the conference. Yeah. 2024 mm -hmm. in June, just to see the context. Yeah. Because it's lived forever, right? Mm -hmm. um, so at this point in time, you spoke this morning. Mm -hmm. and I watched you speak. And I watched you read off the audience. And mm -hmm. like part of it is that, right? Like mm -hmm. um, I, I felt it was engaging, but that's personal opinion. Mm -hmm. um, can you put how do you put that into words? How do you what are you looking for? What do you Yeah. Because th there's a vibe, right? It's interesting. I think everyone has their own ways to do this part for me i'm looking for people not playing on their phones uh yeah. so i think they're either hopefully if they are playing on their phones they're just taking notes uh but i always feel like that's a good indicator of course if they're talking in the audience that's always bad news uh but if they're generally kind of sat up straight and kind of looking at you with no expression on their face that's actually a good sign for the most part because it means they're intently concentrating right and we see this in our data too right you know it's not always just like Sometimes no emotions is good too. It means if, if there's no attention, no emotions, but they're kind of staring it at the screen, we kind of know that's a good sign because they're kind of concentrating, right? Uh, and really trying to feed off. And, you know, I kind of slid in a couple of personal anecdotes there. Fortunately, you know, touch with that got a few hits. So that's always nice as well. Um, but yeah, just really looking at the audience, figuring out the cue. And I tend to just focus on one or two people as well instead of like the whole crowd. Yeah, I, I actually I love the orchestration, the way you you mm -hmm. you, you really I thought mastered that room. Oh, thank um, you very much. I was I, I, yeah, I, 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 was, I was nervous about that today, to be honest. Uh, and and I, I like the beginning. We're going off script, but there's no script. But uh, mm -hmm. I I like the beginning. You talked about your own personal journey. Yes. So you uh -huh. got people to buy into you first before they bought into. Yeah. I think that's a very important, uh, you know, a, a pro tip here, right? If you really want to get people engaged, uh, if people in general are more engaged with humans, right? They want to understand personal stories, personal connections. The real trick is, and this is what I was really nervous about, is like I was telling a story about my upbringing where I've traveled a lot, I've met a lot of people, emotions are different, and I was really trying to figure out how I can tie this in to the business side, right? Uh, and making that connection and uh, it turned out well, you know, everyone kind of came up afterwards, they, they really enjoyed it. And the part they do remember is the personal side of me and they were able to then recall what the business was about based on my personal anecdote. Right, because you're a stranger in front of- I'm just another guy, right? Yeah. Another guy on stage, probably what the 20th person that's pitched in this, uh, sure. in, during this conference. And the way I see this, to be honest with you, uh, I'm competing against attention from those guys. How did you get into this? Oh, so uh, for me personally, I was, uh, you know, been in, you know, startups and venture capital for a while now. Uh, in my last role, I was at NestVC, investing in early stage SaaS companies. I also ran accelerator programs. In this case, my co-founder, uh, Christina, uh, joined, right? Uh, this was in the, in the kind of first version of Synapox. Um, and then we really kind of got together and thought, hey, why can't we just get the machine uh, or the computer to collect both qualitative and quantitative information? And it kind of went from there. And personally speaking, you know, what I mentioned this morning was 100% uh, genuine, right? I've always been interested in the human mind. I'm fascinated by how everyone is a little bit different. I'm married to a, a psychiatrist, right, that uh, has 50 published papers. Uh, I'm also, a, you know, I play poker professionally for a while. So reading people was sort of, you know, important to make money in that sense. Uh, so always just generally fascinated in this whole idea of uh, how people are different and how they react subconsciously to things. Mm -hmm. I wonder if, so my dad's a psychiatrist. No. And um, mm -hmm. there are lots of people in our business mm -hmm. who have like direct connections, like one, one degree of separation from yeah. people in that field. Mm -hmm. 
very closely tied together, you know, yeah. how the human mind works and uh, how they show reactions and depending on how their brains are structured, uh, also very important. And honestly, everything in AI that we've learned today is based on the human mind. Do you find, because you're so deep into, into business and, mm -hmm. and these things, do you find when you do simple transactions like going to get a coffee or well, getting on the bus or what well, I don't know, mm -hmm. uh, you're in LA, right? So, yes. Uh -huh. um, any place you go, that it, where humans are around, uh -huh. do you find yourself doing your own computations and microanalyzing? Um, maybe I kind of catch myself a little bit and uh, you know think about how this would be represented from a machine's perspective for sure. Uh, but I don't think no more than you know the normal person. What I do find myself a lot is criticizing advertising. I see because yeah. <laughs> we do a lot of ad testing. And every time I see an ad, I was like, wow, of course, they actually spend money on that. You know, it's surprising to me. <laughs> or with the first five seconds, it just didn't really catch, right? What is something that you would like researchers to um, that I think that they are in a very good position right now. Uh, there's a lot of talk about AI taking over jobs. I personally do not believe that. I believe that the person or the human next to you that is using AI will take your job. So one tip is like to really get yourself embedded and there's no better time. I think one thing that AI is very good at is turning through data and giving outputs. Yeah. Um, and uh, for large organizations is to start investing more money into your data teams, into your research teams, into your insights team, because in the end of the day, uh, those consumer insights members are the ones that are going to form the foundation of your business. So it's forward compatible with all these generated AI tools in the future. If you don't do it, your competitors are doing it, and you will see the losses in the future if you do not invest in your insights people today. 100%. Yeah. I, I'm in my head, all the gears spinning now, yeah. thinking about you could use this in an airport lounge to see customer satisfaction. You could Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I think there's a lot of other companies that do that too, where yeah. they're leveraging biometrics for yeah. either security, etc. I think one thing that we know what we're good at and what we're not, um, one thing that we are highly focused on is really understanding what people see that's directly in front of them. Right. Um, and that's important too, because we have to have a consistent stage where, the, you know, the, the, like where, how they're interacting and we basically can measure this at scale. Um, so everything we do is kind of pretty much done in the same way. And that's why we have this massive data set that we can use to build our AI models or predictive models uh, as we kind of continue our business in the future. Do you mm -hmm. find this fascinating or frightening? I find it fascinating. Uh, you know, again, I don't think AI, I don't think Skynet is coming anytime soon. Uh, maybe it is, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like there's just so much opportunity for, uh, you know, you don't even need to code anymore, right? You can go online, you pay your $20 a month on ChatGPT and the things you can even build the custom builder is somewhat fascinating, right? And it's really opening up the playing field. And what you probably won't see so much in just consumer technologies is the, the term shadow AI, right? Things are happening in the background that will just augment your life without you even realizing yeah. it, which is where the 99% of people will be. But in order for you to be that 1%, it's just so easy. Just check out some YouTube videos is what I recommend. Go and, you know, just, just read into it a little bit more and you will get ahead of most people. And that's where the opportunity exists for not just researchers, but... You know, if you're interested in AI, go do it. Do you find yourself on top of all the newsletters? And yeah, I'm, I'm going, I've, I've been going down the rabbit hole. You know, I've uh, definitely been very interested in the subject. And for me, it really took, uh, it really accelerated because again, like I am not, I can barely code, right? Uh, but now my ability to talk to computers without needing to code is similar to a coder. If not, you know, it's all about prompt engineering. And I think one good tip there for prompt engineering is that, you have to just understand how it speaks, how it talks, how it understands your input, and just think about it as a very intelligent and polite child, right? <laughs> so when you work with these models, right, you gotta be patient with them. They might not give you exactly what you want. They might hallucinate, but hey, who doesn't lie these days, you know? Do you say thank you to it? I tr yeah, I, I'm starting to stop saying please and thank yous because I just realized it's uh, kind of, you know, a waste of typing space, but hey, maybe when Skynet comes out, I'm gonna have to pay for that in the future for being rude, you know, who knows? <laughs> Um, otherwise than that, is there anything else that's on your mind? Yeah, um, so I think there is a big topic around AGI uh, mm. that's you know on the top of everyone's minds. You know, it's coming in two years, etc. I think for myself, I I personally believe that you know are we going to build a computer that's intelligent than humans? Probably, but in my mind, 
is AGI going to be a Chinese guy? Is it going to be a white guy? Is it an Indian person? You know, what does this mean that it's going to, you know, what is AGI? And for me, it's one thing is lacking again, it's the correct data for it to even represent who we are as a human race, right? It's only based on the information that we've told it uh, by providing information online, whether it's on the website or surveys, whatever it may be, right? but it's all rational data. And we feel, and not to plug Santa Box here, but really to integrate uh, unconscious behaviors that we have. So it has a true understanding towards what our human minds are generally about, how we react to things, what we say and the things we don't say, which encompasses more than 90% of what's actually going on in the brain. We need to kind of integrate that sort of data into these systems in order to get true AGI, in my belief. And I also think that AGI is going to be, uh, you're going to have different almost ethnicities of AGI, right? If you think about what's going on in other countries in different languages, you know, the Chinese are making their own version of, you know, open air or whatever, right? Korea, Naver, Kakao Talk, right? And I'm sure there's other versions in the background in Russia in different languages. Language does matter because ultimately the models that we see are based on the English language. You know, one opportunity here, I think, uh, you know, someone needs to build an LLM in Spanish, right? I feel like there's a lot of opportunity there and you're going to start seeing these sort of artificial AGIs that are from different ethnicities. And I'm excited to see when this day actually comes and get them to play chess against each other or get them to play poker against each other and see what happens then, <laughs> you know? So that would be pretty cool. There could be a sports league one day. Oh, like, yeah. The Russian versus Chinese versus American versus Canadian teams. That's what that's where I see it going. You know, I don't think there's going to be just one AGI for all. Um, I think there's going to be AGIs that are trained on different languages, different cultural uh, understandings, uh, and it's going to be, you know, maybe representative of the nation to some extent, but I don't think there's going to be just one AGI for everything. Mm -hmm. What a crazy time to do that. It is an insane time, and I always wonder if it's, is, is it always been like this, or now just we're just more interconnected, uh, but I do feel and see that uh, things are going to be nuts in the next couple of years, but it will plateau at some point, but we're not quite there yet. If a research market get involved with, with your product, mm -hmm. is it subscription? Is it one-off? Yeah. It so we currently work mainly with the brands directly. Yeah. Uh, however, we are opening up uh, and we invite researchers to come and talk to us uh, and leverage us as a tool, you know, either leverage our methodology, augment it. Um, and we definitely want to start opening up this up to the community, right? Uh, to really, instead of just collecting rational data only, to start integrating these different data sets around uh, facial eye tracking, uh, biometrics as a whole uh, into your research um, so you can get more granularity and actionability uh, in terms of what you do. Yeah, was I correct in saying that works off webcam? Or yes, uh, great, great. that's a great, uh, you know, thanks for uh, bringing that up. Uh, how it works is uh, very similar to a survey. You know, you'll send it out to your participants. They'll open up a link that opens up in a, in a browser and then they'll go through the usual stuff. Um, on the phone too? Or no? uh, yeah, we, we, we're mostly on the laptop now because again, we want that structured environment. Yeah. The problem with phones is that, you know, people can hold them the wrong way. The technology works on the phone, but yeah. we can't really control the way they hold the phone, Got right? Um, so that's one of the limitations for now um, and uh, yeah they'll get the survey link uh, they will give consent to the study they'll give consent to using the web camera and they go through a screener they watch whatever you want to show them and that's when it collects the video of their face and it processes that in real time survey questions and then close right uh, so surveys just with uh, the the uh, the biometrics part billing can you predict the weather today? Is it going to stay hot forever or is it... Be... <laughs> That's uh, not our field of expertise. No. But if you want us to predict what a certain subset of people hmm. will react and the way they behave to something they see, then yes, that's something we can do. Fair. Mm -hmm. um, it's a pleasure speaking with yes. you. Yes. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Cheers. All right. Thank you.